Orange Crush series has been offering beginners and players on a budget the essential Orange amplifier experience for almost 25 years now. They range in size from small to stage with bedroom options in between. But in a world that's becoming ever more digital and feature dense, these straightforward analog amps still enjoy huge popularity with guitarists of all skill levels. If you are looking to step into the realm of analog amplifiers and want to know which crush is right for you, then good news! I've been playing around with all of them and I've got some insights that might help you make up your mind. If you are here to experience the sound of each of these Crush amplifiers, to discover their feature set and make an informed decision on which to purchase, then please feel free to skip ahead in this video using the time codes provided. However, there are a couple of things about these amplifiers I wish to address before we get there that I think is important knowledge you'll want to know as you embark upon your discovery of analog amplifiers. If you are starting your guitar journey, you are in the best era for choice of good quality, low price equipment there has ever been. Not only do you get great analog amplifiers like the Orange Crush, but there's also a tidal wave of excellent digital amps too. Stuff like the Boss Katana or the Positive Grid Spark or Fender's Mustang amps, all of which I've played and made videos about before. I'm not here to hate on digital amps or amp sim software. There are a lot of fantastic options in that area and you might find those to be a better fit for what you want to achieve than these analog crush amps. However, analog and digital amps are a very different experience. Digital is great for convenience and getting stuff done, but analog amps just hit different in terms of musical inspiration, experimentation with sounds and the enjoyment of playing the instrument. If you haven't experienced an analog amplifier before, these are a really great entry point because not only are they affordable, but they can get surprisingly close to the playing experience of their bigger brothers. Op amp based gain staging makes a lot of sense when you want to create a reliable analog amplifier that is still representative of the bigger valve amps, where the main objective is keeping the manufacturing simple and the retail price as low as possible. Tone is not in the components, but in the circuit. Orange understand this and have designed these Crush amplifiers with the same methodology they apply to their flagship valve amps, keeping the circuits as similar as possible while replacing hot glass for solid state ICs. Discrete transistor construction would get you slightly closer to the response of a valve amplifier, of course, but it would also require more components to build the circuit and the matching of FETs for best performance. This is something that Orange implemented on the Super Crush, a 100 watt head version being sold in a price bracket that justified the extra work and expense. However, when designing the Crush combos aimed squarely at the beginner and practice market, the driving motivator for sales is the price. These need to be affordable, and with so much of that RRP being absorbed by distribution, retail costs and the physical construction of these boxes, which are supremely robust, it doesn't leave a lot in the budget to splash out on the circuit. So recreating the valve amp signal path with a sequence of inexpensive op amps and a push-pull power stage gets closer to the core orange experience than, say, just slapping a distortion pedal circuit into a box with a speaker. Speaker size matters. Increasing the sizes of speakers makes the amplifiers louder and extends the bandwidth of reproducible frequencies. A perfect example of this is the Crush Mini, a 3 watt battery powered amplifier with a tiny 4 inch speaker. This on its own isn't all that loud or impressive sounding, but Orange have very smartly included an external speaker output to the Mini, allowing it to be connected to a full-size speaker cabinet, like this PPC212 with 12-inch Celestion Neocream back speakers. A 3 watt amp powered by a 9 volt battery is more than capable of driving this cabinet at surprising volume, and the difference in sound is not coming from any changes to the amp or the settings or the guitar, but from the speaker and the cabinet it's contained in. <laughs> Thank you. 
people are quick to write off these smaller speakers, considering them not viable for representing a guitar. However, size isn't as important as how you use it. These 6, 8 and 10 inch speakers all have their specific sound, which absolutely will work in a recording context if you know what you're doing. While I was able to get the Crush 12 and Crush 20 with their 6 and 8 inch speakers loud enough to represent their best sound within volume limits that would be tolerable in the house, the Crush 35 with its 10 inch speaker was shaking the floor and walls by the time the speaker was working at its best. Smaller speakers are more manageable at lower volumes, making them ideal for a bedroom practice amplifier where you have flatmates or family members you don't want to annoy. More power and bigger speakers are only better if you are looking for an amplifier that can handle band practice and small shows, where you need to project sound at high volume into a larger space. So please, consider your intended application for the amplifier before defaulting to the idea of biggest numbers. There's no point in having the biggest, loudest amplifier if every time you turn it on, you're told to turn it down. As we get into the sounds here, I want to address that I've made every attempt to make these tones as accurate as possible to the experience you'll have if you are playing through these amplifiers. So to assist that, I'll be putting the amp settings on screen, letting you know how I was dialing these in. I know there will be players out there who are desperate to know what these amplifiers sound like with pedals, because that's an application they want to use. And there will be others again who think using pedals of any kind is providing a dishonest representation of what these amps can do. So, in an attempt to appease everybody, I've chosen to use just three pedals at various points to augment the sound of these amplifiers. A Proco Rat, an Ibanez Tube Screamer, and a Boss Delay, all of which are very common pedals that I think most players will be using in conjunction with with these amplifiers and there will be a clear on-screen indication whenever these pedals are active. All of the sounds are being recorded from the speakers in the Crush amps using a Sennheiser 421 compact microphone. The 421 is an industry standard microphone for recording guitar cabinets and it has been since the 1960s. This should represent the amplifier as you would hear it if it was used live or on record. Crush 12 is the odd one out in the family. It has a single clean channel with volume and gain controls, but there's also an overdrive control which blends in some distortion generated by clipping diodes in the preamp. This is the only Crush amp to generate its distortion in this fashion. It's a clean and crunch amp, not really capable of the high gain distortion sounds of the larger amplifiers in the series. And while dialing in drive tones by balancing the gain, overdrive and volume controls is very rewarding for the experienced player, I think this would be confusing and frustrating for a beginner trying to learn the amp. The 6 inch speaker sounds delightfully retro, like some guitar tones from the 60s. Pairing it up with a couple of pedals, a Proco Rat for distortion stacking and a Boss Delay, I was getting a nice range of classic drive tones out of this. There's a lot to explore if you have a tonally old school mindset and a few pedals already in your collection. I found it to be a fun little amp to mess around with. It delivered some specific vintage vibes, but I think you would already have to be pretty experienced with guitar gear to get the best out of it.
dedicated clean and distortion channels, 20 watts of power and an 8 inch speaker, the Crush 20 brings these practice amps into spitting distance of the feature set of an orange rocker verb with a range of tones to match. The 8 inch speaker probably strikes the perfect balance of representing the sound of a guitar at manageable volumes while giving enough low end to feel satisfying. It's nicely mid focused and while it doesn't have the fullness of a larger speaker, at least you won't be shaking the floor and walls and annoying everyone around you in your pursuit of great tones. This focused sound also makes it a killer recording option where you need something that punches through the density of sounds in a guitar mix. This and the Tube Screamer would absolutely nail that guitar solo tone you've been chasing. However, if you are a complete beginner, it kinda makes sense to spend a little more and get the Crush 20RT. It's the same amplifier, the same speaker, and the same sounds, but it also includes a digital reverb and a built-in tuner, both of which will absolutely elevate your guitar playing experience. A little bit of reverb and being in tune is 90% of sounding good on guitar. This is the one I would recommend for a bedroom or home use practice amplifier. It gets very close to the feeling of playing a rocker verb while staying manageable in volume. That's not to say that this can't get louder than what your family members are willing to tolerate. This will absolutely cause some chaos if you want it to, but unlike a more powerful amplifier with a bigger speaker, you don't need to be shaking the house in order to get this sounding its best. <laughs> Stepping up to the Crush 35RT, we start to leave the world of bedroom practice amps behind. This has a 35 watt output, a 10 inch speaker, and in addition to the reverb and tuner, an effects loop is included so that we can finally use our delay pedal after the amplifier's distortion. Everything about this is now optimised to be an amplifier that you take out of the house, one with which you could perform a show. This is a loud amplifier. 35 watts and a 10 inch speaker are ideal for smaller venues. In your local pub with its low ceiling and 150 person capacity, anything more powerful than this is going to be too loud and too boomy for the space. The sound would be a mess, all you would get is bass reflections and so much volume but without any definition to the sound. Remember, 100 watt heads and 412 cabs were designed to play to 10,000 people in a stadium, not to 50 people in the Cock and Swan. The 10 inch speaker keeps the sound focused enough to be heard clearly in smaller venues while still providing enough power to get over the drums and project your sound into the audience. I took the Crush 35RT to a local hall to see how it would perform at gig loudness. At half volume it was deafeningly loud and pushing the limits of what would be appropriate for the space, but sounded excellent for a gnarly biting rock tone. Plenty of mid-range and a sizzling top end that would melt into the stinging crash of cymbals and without the overpowering low end that would compete with bass guitar and drums. <laughs> This is the sort of sound that would slot effortlessly into a live mix and keep the sound engineer very happy. If you turned up to a small venue with a 412, the sound engineer would be trying to shape the tone into something more like this anyway. Oh, my God. 
are wondering what this sounds like at studio volume, then I've also recorded some examples of that. <laughs> I should probably mention at this point that all of these Crush amplifiers have a headphone output. Connecting a set of headphones to these will mute the internal speaker so that you can practice guitar in silence. This is what you'd hear through your headphones. <laughs> This is the one area of these amplifiers where I think Orange insisting on everything being analog kinda lets them down. They are using an analog EQ filter to approximate the sound of a speaker and applying that to the raw preamp signal, and I think it doesn't quite get close enough. It's a pretty vintage complaint of mine. I've said this about every Orange product with the headphone output. It doesn't really sound like a speaker, and it certainly isn't the produced and processed sound we've come to expect when listening to recorded guitars through headphones. Listening in headphones is where the digital stuff really has the advantage. You can apply IRs and post EQs and compression, all the stuff that you do to refine the sound of a recorded guitar. I think Orange would massively benefit from including a basic digital IR loader, slap an IR of an Orange cab into it and would all be having a better time. Or if they don't want to do that, as I've suggested before, just give me one extra switch so I can turn off the analog cab sim circuit and then I can use my own IR loader pedal for headphones or direct use. Orange, if you aren't going to improve it, at least give us the option to bypass it. I've tried to keep my representation of these Crush amps as raw as possible, but I know from many viewers who already have these and have shared their rig pictures with me that they're using them with big pedal boards, building up from the foundational tones I've demonstrated into something much grander and more personal. There is so much more I could do with effects to enhance these, but that's a discussion for another time. If you want to take a closer look at any of these Orange Crush amplifiers, you'll find product links in the video description. That's all for now. Keep it loud and stay safe. <laughs>